Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and I am here with the final video for the 11th Simple What Nots Club, month number one. Close quarters is what they're calling this quilt, and I'm calling it the plus sign quilt. So I have finished this quilt, I have quilted it and bound it, and it is hanging on my door right now. So you can see it's not that big of a quilt. I think it's like 30 inches or something like that, but it fits perfectly on the back of my door, and I love it. I love it. So I'm going to walk you through this. Um, I'm going to show you how I quilt it, which I did some meandering with a variegated thread. I'm going to show you how I put the binding strips together and how I bound it because I don't hand sew uh, quilts that I hang on my wall. If I'm doing a show quilt or I'm doing a bed quilt and I will hand bind that, but I will sew these bindings on. So that's what I'm gonna walk you through in this uh, video. And I wanted to let you know that this is this club has eight quilts in it. And this is the first month. And I just found out the second month shipped last week, so I should be getting it uh, tomorrow, I think, which is March 15th. So I'll let you know when I start working on the second one, if you want to sew along with me, and I'll put a link down below to the club at Fat Quarter Shop that this is part of. And if you want to stick around and watch the, uh, the next seven quilts that I do for this club, subscribe below and hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified every time I do this. And I have some what's in the box videos, which I'm going to be doing one here real soon. Um, where I open up my mail and see what fun stuff I get. I also have some sew, uh, some other sew-alongs, and I am doing a U.S. quilt block journey, if you want to follow that. So, let's get started on quilting this. So I'm going to start with the quilting. Um, I've already, obviously, um, put the backing and the batting on, and I use a quilt basting spray to do that. Uh, it keeps the two layers stuck to the batting so that when I'm moving them around, they don't uh, get uh, um, bunched up or, or just move on me. I also will baste all my edges of the top of the quilt just to keep that in place also. So what I'm just going to show you is that I'm doing a big meander um, around the quilt. I'm using a sulky, uh, I think it's a 40 weight variegated thread. And it's kind of like a fall color gold variegated thread. Um, and I'm just gonna keep moving around the quilt, just meandering. I think of it as like a puzzle pieces. You're just building these puzzle pieces. Um, just make sure that you're, you know, making sure your hands and your foot pedal are kind of going together so that you have the same length of stitch all the way around. You can push the quilt too fast and you'll get really big stitches. Um, so you just kind of want to, you know, practice with that maybe before you start quilting. And I always do a practice before I start quilting to make sure my tension is good also. Um, it, took me, it took me a few minutes to get my tension correct before I started quilting. You want to be mindful of all the seams too because you can hit one of those big seams where everything meets and your needle and everything else just don't want to push through that. So just be careful, you know, watch where you're going. Um, I also will look ahead. I kind of have in mind as I'm going where I'm going to go, but I also look ahead so that I don't cross any seams that I've already done. So that's basically how I do my quilting, especially my meandering, is that I'll just kind of push it along, look a little bit ahead where I want to go. Sometimes I'll wrap, I'll push myself out and then I'll come back in so that I'm not just doing like camel bumps around. You know, it just kind of has a random appearance to it. So I'm going to fast forward this, let you see what it looks like when it's done. But, you know, as I'm turning it here, you can see my meandering and you can see how the variegated quilting or quilt thread looks on this. 
So my quilting's done, and now I'm going to cut the excess batting and backing off of it. Um, I usually just will follow the side of the quilt up and just cut it all off and then work at squaring it up. But I was pleasantly surprised to find out that this was a pretty square little quilt. Um, I could just follow that edge right up and cut it. So that's all I do here is just follow along the edge of my quilt, cut that off, and then uh, I'm going to get ready to bind it. When I get done cutting the edges off, I do fold it um, halfway over on itself just to see how the edges line up. And it was really nice to see that they lined up really nice. So in the beginning, they had us cut these, uh, they called them gray strips for the binding. I'm calling it a brown strip. And um, these are what you're going to use to put your binding together. And I take the, um, I just put them together where they go um, perpendicular to each other. And then I will sew from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. And that will let me fold it over into a straight piece of continuous fabric. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do, I think we cut six strips. I'm going to put all six strips together. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to trim them at a quarter of an inch seams and then press them open. So that's how this continuous type of binding goes together um, with putting the strips together. Now that I have all my strips sewn together, I am going to cut all these seams and I use my ruler and I put the quarter inch mark onto the seam and then I cut it off so it's a quarter inch seam allowance there. As you can see I measured wrong, I get the next ones right. So I'm going to cut all of these first and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to iron them all open. Um, you iron them open so that the uh, it lays flatter for you especially like on the binding I mean, you may be turning a corner or something you want that to be as flat as it can be once you have your quarter inch seams cut then we will uh, set that seam with the iron and then we're going to go through and iron those seams flat And that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, like I said before, it just helps to make your binding flat as you're going around. Because you're going to be folding this over. So you're going to have double the fabric. And then you're going to fold it around the quilt. So you want these seams to be as flat as possible. So next up is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to build the binding by folding it in half with wrong sides together. And that create, creates the binding that we're going to then use to put onto the quilt. So this is one of my least favorite parts of making a quilt. Um, I would say the binding is. Um, so I'm just going to fast forward through this because it's pretty self-explanatory. So now we're ready to put the binding onto the quilt. And I just lay mine on. I don't pin it on. Um, I'll lay it on and then I'll just, as I'm going, I'm lining it up with the edge of my quilt and I'm stitching, I'm using a quarter inch foot and I'm stitching at a quarter inch with just a standard stitch. And most quarter inch foots have a little notch that's, uh, a quarter of an inch away from the front of that foot so when it hits the edge of the when that notch hits the edge of my quilt that's where I stop so I have a quarter of an inch left before I hit the end of my binding so then I just fold it over at a diagonal 
so that it's lined straight up and then I'll fold it back over on itself and that creates that mitered um, binding that you see. So then I'll start um, sewing again at the top with my quarter inch foot and my standard and I'll just uh, keep lining it up as I go until I get to the other end and then I'll stop again when that notch on my foot hits the edge of the quilt so that I'm stopping a quarter of an inch from the edge. So there's a fun fact for you if you want to take a look at your quarter inch foot and find that notch. Um, maybe you didn't know about it. It took me a long time before I knew about it and it's been a great um, find. Because I was always like getting my little ruler up there and checking to see if I was a quarter of an inch away until my mom told me about that on my foot. So again, I stopped a quarter of an inch there. I fold it over at a diagonal, line up my edges straight. You can see that my binding is straight with my edge there. So that I get a nice uh, 45 degree diagonal mitered binding. And then I start sewing again, sew to the other edge. So I've reached my last corner, which means that I'm on the side of the quilt that I started my binding on. So I didn't mention at the beginning, I will usually start my binding a few inches from the corner. And I leave, depending on the size of the quilt, I'll leave anywhere from 12 to 18 inches of the binding left unsewn at the beginning. And then when I reach my last corner here, I'll sew a few inches in from there, as you saw. And then that leaves me quite a bit of binding left too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my two ends of my bindings that aren't sewn, and I'm going to line them up with each other. And since this is a two and a half inch binding, what I want to do is I'm laying, I'm laying that piece on top of the other piece. I'm going to measure a quarter of an inch over from the bottom piece. And I'm doing a quarter of an inch because I like to make, I want to make it just a little bit smaller than the width of my binding. And that gives me a tight binding to finish with instead of having extra fabric getting pushed. And then at two and a quarter inches, that's where I'm going to cut my top piece. So now we need to join these two pieces of binding together. And I actually do it on the first time. Sometimes it takes me a couple times to figure this out. For some reason, it just doesn't stick in my brain how to do it. But this is how I do it. I'll take that bottom piece and just lay it out flat. right side up. And then the other piece that was on the top, I will twist towards me and then I will open that and lay it right side, right side down on the other piece. And then I'm going to pin that, the edge that's towards you and the uh, top edge because I'm going to stitch in between those two and then I'll fold it over to make sure that it's going to be right and not twisted. So that's how I do my binding. So now I'm going to sew diagonally starting between those two clips that I just did. Sometimes it's a little hard to maneuver. You just got to kind of get your quilt all bunched up there so you have enough space. But you can see I'm starting in between those two clips and I'm going to start sewing just like we did when we were putting the binding strips together. 
that quarter or that um, diagonal strip and then I'm going to cut it at a quarter of an inch and I'm going to finger press it open. On bigger quilts, it's a little easier to maneuver everything around. Little tiny quilts, it's a little harder. But if you leave yourself enough binding to work with, you can manage to get it done. So here I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch away from the seam. And I was off camera and didn't know it, but that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm just doing that with my scissors and I'm eyeballing it. So now I'm just going to finger press that seam open so that it lays flat. So now when you pull your quilt tight, that binding will lay nice and flat. And because you just kept it a quarter of an inch under what the width of the binding was, you aren't going to have any bunching on your binding. I don't even I don't know if I was taught that or if I just tried it because I just always seem to have a trouble with my binding bunching at the end, and that seems to work for me. So I'm just gonna get the rest of this sewn right on. So now I take my binding that I've just sewn on, and I'm gonna set that seam, and I'm gonna start ironing the binding towards that seam so that it folds over really nice when I'm going to turn it and clip it so that I can sew the binding on. And I am sewing the binding on um, because this is gonna hang in my house and nobody's gonna see the back of this quilt. The only person who may look at the back of this quilt is my mother because she's a quilter, but I doubt that she will anyway. So I always, if it's gonna hang in my house, I sew it on. Um, I am doing a bed quilt and I will hand sew that binding but if it's gonna hang on my wall, I will sew it, I will sew my binding down. Um, so now I'm going to clip it when I turn it. And since I've ironed it, it makes it, a, it, makes it really easy to kind of turn that over. So when I turn it over, um, it makes a nice clean edge on the other side. And I'm just gonna go around and clip that binding over and I put the bottom of the clip on the back of the binding because I'm going to sew, I'm going to stitch in the ditch on the top. When I get close to the corner, I will pull it tight. I will clip right next to that corner and then I'll turn it and I'll straighten that top part out as much as I can and then I'm going to just pull that bottom binding up and over and then just work with my finger there to get it so that it's just mitered perfectly into the corner there. And then I clip it. So that's how I turn my corners. So at this point, I am now going to stitch in the ditch, um, which means I'm going to stitch right into the seam allowance between the binding and the quilt, which should make it disappear. So I have a stitch in the ditch foot. I have never liked it. I don't, I don't know if I don't use it correctly or if I'm just not good at it. So I use this open toe foot and I just go slowly and I just watch the needle and make sure that it goes right into that seam. And that's how I do the entire quilt all the way around. And it will catch the back and my quilt will be done and bound and I will be able to hang it up on my wall.
So here I am, I'm coming up to where I started the uh, stitch in the ditch. And when I reach that point, I just give it a little back stitch, pull it out, and I'm gonna trim that uh, initial thread from when I started. And then I'm gonna reposition the camera to show you what that binding looks like. And it really does disappear into the quilt. It's it's virtually invisible. And then I'm going to turn it over and show you what the back looks like. See? To me that's beautiful. Beautiful enough to hang on the wall. And I don't have to do any hand sewing. So there you go my friends. There is the first month of the quilt done. Leave a message below um, if you've done this with me. I know my mom's doing it. Um, we've been able to talk back and forth and see how it's going with each other and get this put together. And I will post a picture of both our quilts together so you can see how they turned out. But I appreciate you coming along with this sew along with me, coming along this sew along with me. It's been a blast. It was frustrating in the beginning, but as you can see, it all turned out fine. So, I mean, it almost always does. Turns out great. So, you know. I don't know why I get frustrated sometimes, but I've learned that it still turns out beautiful. So I appreciate you watching this video and I appreciate you following along on this quilt along and I will see you in the next video.